Yeah, all right. Yeah. Uh, how come I can't hear anybody talking? Because she doesn't want to be in here. Hey, man, no, you can hear us? <laughs> oh, now I can. Okay, great. You were good. We were all being quiet at that point, so you didn't miss anything. Great. We're just giving it about one more minute to let any other people log on, um, and then we'll get started. Thanks for all for being here. All righty. I think I think we're all set. Yeah. Well, since it's five, I guess we can go ahead and get started and any stragglers can just come on in when they get here and log on. But thank you all for coming. We are excited to have Benny Davis here with us. Um, he is a master gardener and has great wisdom for us, especially for those of us who are struggling with moles in this season, which it is the time of moles. So I know we will learn a lot from it. And thank you, Benny, for being here. Um, can everyone hear us okay? Yes. Wonderful. All right. I'll hand it over to you, Benny. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. I'm happy to be here, and I really appreciate um, the accommodations you've given. Um, it's uh, good to do it from home as opposed to traveling, and I'm selfish like that sometimes, especially with the pandemic. Uh, to, I will give a brief presentation of the mold. Hopefully, it will be enough to inform you to how to take care of them. Take care of them. <laughs> we want them gone. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you what, I can't tell you everything you need to know, but I will tell you everything I know about the mold. They can travel very fast sometimes. Okay. That is a hairy tail mole. Now I say hairy tail because of the hairy tail, but all moles do not have a hairy tail. <clears throat> but that's the only picture I could find on the web of a mole that was presentable. <laughs> Why is it? All right. The mole himself comes has a scientific classification just like all animals and mammals do. However, that's really unimportant if you have moles in your lawn. The important item here is that the mole is a mammal. That's really, that's the important part. A mole is a mammal. They tend to have the same characteristics. Now, any information that I give you, 90% of it can be found in the mold control at the Tennessee Extension Office. And of course you want the uh, special publication 293A. 293B I think is on chicken. So you wanna make sure you get the A, hopefully. I did not reinvent the wheel in my research of moles, even though I've had mold problems ever since I bought my first house. And that was <clears throat> a few years back. But all of the specialists and the information that I acquired, you can see here. And if you like, double check or recheck. First is identifying the problem. Now, you may think it's a mole. It could be a mole, but it may also be an armadillo, 
a squirrel, a raccoon. It could be anything that tunnels and digs. It could be chipmunk. Um, all of these have the same characteristics or some of the same characteristics as a mole. So you have to make sure that that's your problem. You don't want to be chasing a armadillo looking for a mole. You'll never find either one. There are 42 different types of moles worldwide. There are only 25 active in North America and only three west of the rock, east of the Rockies, sorry, east of the Rockies are prevalent to Tennessee, Mississippi, and Arkansas. That is the eastern mole. The eastern mole is the one that you will see that's most common. The one picture below is the star mole. And the only reason the star mole is there is because it's dramatic. I mean, it's really ugly and he's vicious looking and I couldn't think of another reason because the star mole is generally found around lakes and ponds, rarely in the open lawn. Moles are not that large. Most of them are no more than eight inches long and they don't weigh a lot, five ounces or I don't know, 14 ounces, the maximum size generally. But a semi-definition of moles is that they are subterranean mammals. There it is again. With a slender body, they have a velvety fur that's usually black, brown, or silver, or grayish. It, <clears throat> they're undersized, usually tan, and the legs are short, strong, and they all of them have hairless tails with the exception of the Eastern star mole. They do have eyes and ears and they can bite. However, I've never seen them eat anything other than worms. Uh, <clears throat> they are very sensitive to light and sound. The light is not necessarily for sight, but just light and dark. Their feet are twice, the front feet are twice the size of their rear feet. which are clawed and webbed, which offer a great deal of digging and cutting. Now those claws are sharp. They cut the roots and twigs and anything in their way while they're tunneling and bumping. I did say they were small, right? That is allegedly, I say allegedly because it's not a very clear picture, is a five pound mole, which I find a little difficult to believe, but the picture was off the internet, so you have to believe it. But if a 10 ounce mole can tear up your yard, think about what a five pound mole could do. That's a little unbelievable for me. However, it's out there. The areas that they usually cover is not that difficult once you realize that the northwest and the southwest, the north is cold and rocky, the south is hot and sandy, they couldn't tone through the sand. So generally the eastern star mole is out that way. I think that's possibly how they got their name as well. that mold dig. Now, this is reasonably important because from time to time you think they're gone and they're not. The surface tunnel is temporary. They usually tunnels are for food and getting from one point to the other. These tunnels are generally active in early spring and fall and they usually in the mornings and afternoons. I think they take lunch off like the rest of us do. The tunnels may be anywhere from three to eight inches deep, depending upon the temperature. In extreme cold and heat, they go a little bit deeper and more difficult to find. These tunnels can run anywhere from 225 feet to 300 feet. 
depending upon how much time and un how unobstructed the mold may be. The deeper permanent mold, which you will never see, usually leads to and from their burrow, which can be six to 24 inches deep, or going to a surface tunnel or temporary tunnel. Their burrow is usually anywhere from six to eight inches wide and maybe anywhere from 24 inches deep. They generally have the burrows very protected out of the way so you just can't walk on the ground and mash it in. Moles do not hibernate. No matter what anyone tell you, they're still there in the winter. You just don't see them because they're in the deeper permanent tunnels. Those tunnels, if a worm or a grub or something stumbles into that tunnel, it becomes the meal of the day. Mounds. These are that you do have mold, not necessarily how many, it just means that they are pushing dirt out of an existing tunnel. They're getting dirt out of their way, so they push it up and out of the ground. It's not their burrow, it's not their feeding tunnel, it's just where they're eliminating a cleaning house. They're basically setting up a habitat Now, this is an indication of the tunnels that I spoke of earlier. The picture on the left, this is a surface tunnel. This is the feeding tunnel. It, this is where a mound where they may push the dirt up and out of their burrow. This would be the nest or burrow in the lower part. And these tunnels can go any direction from there. They do not necessarily fall in this format. And you can see the difference in this illustration. Even though you'll never find a burrow that close to the surface, this would be the mound. And they have a illustrate a burrow or nest in the mound, which is not quite believable. The reason the mold is in your yard is for food. They will eat almost anything that ends up in their tunnel. I, I, one of the reports that I read from, I think it was the University of uh, Missouri, said that they would eat or they dissected them to tell what they ate in their tunnel. And that would, everything from frogs to locusts. Now, on the other hand, what will eat them? Snakes, owls, fox, raccoon, cats, dogs. Cats and dogs are your best bet. Hawks, coyotes, skunks, badgers, and weasels. Badgers and weasels are not necessarily over indigenous to West Tennessee. Uh, Northern Mississippi or Arkansas. So, in this animal, cat or dog, <clears throat> pardon me, if you want to hold on to those. Now, they will eat close to 100% of their body weight in a day or less. They need a lot of energy because they do a lot of digging and tunneling and physical activity. So, yes, they will eat, eat, and eat. That's their main purpose, is to eat and produce pups. Okay. Yes, they do bite. The only reason I got this illustration was to show their claws and how they're formed. They dig outward from the inside or center out, the center of the body outward, which is it give you an indication of where they are sometimes because they push the dirt out 
and push up with the head or neck, which is extremely strong. Now, the important point here is they live 36 months. So you only have to put up with a mole three years, maybe. The problem is his family comes to his funeral and they stay. So he may die or she, and the pups come and they don't leave. The bad part about that is they can reproduce in 42 days, anywhere from two to seven pups. And I think that's been increased to two to nine. Um, someone was telling me about that, and I'll have to do some more research, but they do reproduce in early March and April. That does not mean November and October are not on the calendar. Uh, if you think about it, in four weeks, you could have anywhere from 36 to 100 pups in your yard. Usually they leave the nest after about four weeks. That would be considered literal pups. Just six weeks and then another set, six weeks and another set, and you have mold everywhere. I know everyone's cringing at this point. Because who likes mold? But moles do have <laughs> benefits. They can eliminate grubs, beetles, larvae, snail, ants, and cutworms from your lawn. However, I've never seen a mole go through a ant hill. They generally go around ants, but they will eat ants. So I, I haven't figured that one out yet. They like the body mass and biomass from the soil. They create body mass for the soil during their tunneling. They help aerate the soil, which is good for it. However, the, that aeration most people do not like damages. I don't think I can have to tell anyone what damage they actually do. They're digging and bor boring, my goodness. <clears throat> the tunnels separate the roots from the plant. That's why you see dead grass or dead flowers wherever they tunnel. They're not eating the vegetation, they're just destroying it. It creates some unsightly valleys and mounds in the yard <clears throat> and golf courses. Of course, the foundations are also at risk because they generally tunnel around foundations. I have actually seen, I had a small building drop about two inches because of the tunneling and the erosion process. The water got into the mold tunnel where it tunneled around the small building or shed and it dropped two inches, almost separated the roof, rest of the building. And on hills and slopes, it's really devastating when the rain gets into the tunnel, it'll wash, it'll create a problem on hills and slopes. Uh, one of the other problems is that once the mold vacates, other critters move in. Uh, snakes, frogs, mice, chipmunks, gophers, hornets, yellow jackets, they will utilize the mold tunnel once he's moved out. That is the indication that there are mold. That's pushing the dirt out of the habitat. They're getting ready to set up housekeeping. It's unsightly, but it is a warning sign that within the general vicinity of that mound, there will be a nest or a permanent tongue. They're getting the dirt out of their way. If you can see that, it's kind of blurred, but it's a mole trail. They usually go out and then deviate north or south or east or west of a tunnel, and that's exploratory. 
So they will go out, the, all of these are temporary tunnels, but it will deviate out left or right sometime to see if there's better hunting on either side of that tunnel. They can do up to three miles per day. That's my lawn, my neighbor's lawn, and two, three more people along the way. This is a sign of a tunnel, and I bet you no one can tell me which direction he's going. So that is an indication of a freshly dug tunnel in dry dirt. <clears throat> And these are the indicators. Now, the only best thing I can say about this is that that's some really rich soil. But it doesn't say how many mold or where the nest is going to be. It does say they're setting up a habitat. They're getting ready to move in and start a family. <clears throat> now, I've been trying to get rid of molds for 30 years. And if someone just whispered in my ear how to do it, I tried it. I bought smoke bombs. I tried ammonia, marigold, those little things your body is in a hole like worms. I tried those. I put glass, gum. The best thing that worked was an axe. Not necessarily humane, but it works. An axe and a pitchfork, they work the best. Actually, a shotgun was better, but I have to tell you that is not recommended by Master Gardeners or the Extension Office. Uh, shooting moles is more dangerous to you than them, even though it works. But if you shoot a projectile into the soil, do you know where your gas line, water line, electric lines? Are there stones underneath the soil that will ricochet it back toward you? So it would be very, very hazardous to start trying to shoot a mole. Not recommended, and I have to say that very loudly. So if you can't shoot them, how do you get rid of them? But they're not protected by Tennessee. So they have no legal status as protection like some animals do. What do you do? Now, he has the right idea if his shovel was turned the other way and he saw the mold, and you will see them when they're digging only. When they're born, they're quite easily detected. Moles take the path of least resistance. Now, you need to remember that because if you was dedicated to destroying his habitat, as you are, he is to destroying your lawn. Every time he's dig it up, you pack it back down, they generally get the idea and may go somewhere else, maybe. Eating, probing tunnels are the only ones you will see and they're temporary. They don't care whether you stump it back down unless it's a very good feeding area. The mound is a sign of a deeper tunnel. I'm reviewing now. The nest is usually 18 to 24 inches underground. They go deeper in extreme cold and heat. They do not hibernate. Moles can travel anywhere from 18 feet per hour. Moles will eat live food. That's one's very important to keep from going out buying all those little um, pellets and worm starters. Uh, they have a variety of things that you suppose to squirt in the hole or dump in the hole. Uh, moles only eat live insects. Oops. Moles will eat anywhere from 25 to 100% of their body weight. That you need to know because depending upon how hungry they are, the more aggressive they are. The more aggressive they are, the more likely you are to be able to eliminate them. 
mold, <coughs> excuse me, by tunneling molds, usually if they run across food, they'll back up anywhere from six to 12 inches to feed. So if you see where a tunnel just stop right in the middle of your lawn, goes nowhere else, either he's feeding or he's getting ready to start later. Moles are very sensitive to sound. They can feel your heartbeat through your feet on the soil. So you don't have an opportunity sometimes to get very close. However, if they're feeding or digging, apparently just like humans, when we chewing, we can't hear. If we talking, we can't hear that well. So while they're digging, the sound of you there is nullified. They're also sensitive to an unnatural environment, meaning if you dig out a section of his tunnel or stick some glass in it, they're aware of it. They may go around it, under it, or over it. I personally take a small twig when they're tunneling, and I'll push it down and stick a small twig in the ground. If I go on about my business, if I come back later, and that twig is laying down, I know that he's tunneled back through there, and I have an opportunity to greet him or meet him. They tunnel along organic lines, foundation, walkways, fence lines, and so forth. This is where the rain washes the organic matter into the soil, and they can collect because the organic matter it's where the earthworms and grubs feed. Their main meal are earthworms and grubs. So they will follow the organic lines. Mold blood contain twice the hemoglobins of other mammals, meaning they can hold their breath anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes without breathing or moving. So if you're walking through and push down a mound, he will lay there squished where you push it back down with the air out for 30 minutes to 45 minutes till he no longer hears your sound and you'll start back to tunneling or digging. Once they set up the habitat, it's very difficult to get rid of it. In order to get a mold, you have to be patient and have a lot of time. And most people today do not have the time or the patience to get rid of a mold. So the best way and the recommended way is trapping. There are several different types of trap, but the basic are the scissor and the harpoon. The two on the top are scissor traps sold at most big box stores and hardware stores. The two on the bottom are harpoons. The harpoons plunge into the ground and of course the scissors slice. Neither are very humane, but they get the job done. Now, considering Setting a trap is where the wisdom comes in. If you know that tunnel is three inches deep and your harpoon is only two and a half inches deep, you'll never get him. Same thing with a scissor trap. So you have to have some knowledge of where the tunnel is and how to set the trap. You have to also be aware that traps may catch items other than mold. See the bottom right hand photo, a snake got caught in a mold trap. It's kind of difficult to see, but there is a snake in the scissor trap. And now you know almost everything I know. Now, we came back to this photo because you can see where the tire tracks push the mold hill down. It pushed the tire tracks, pushed the tunnel down. 
mole came back, that would be an ideal spot for the trap because you know it's active. He comes this way. He wants this tunnel, and he's aggressively trying to keep it open. Traps were there. Now, as I said, you have to have a lot of patience and time to get rid of a mole. I personally like the axe, <clears throat> but it requires the patience and timing to see them move. You have to see them in order to get rid of them if you're going to take that process. But with a trap, you can set it, go away, come back, check it a little later. So traps are more convenient for you, not necessarily for the mole. And that's about all I know. And I can hang around for questions. Well, thank you so much, Benny. Do we have any questions? Y'all can put them in the chat and I can read them out loud or um, Y'all can just unmute yourself and ask. Yes, I have a question. This is Maddie. What about those things they sell called mole peanuts? Do those work? Uh, they're good for taking your money. <laughs> Moles okay. only, only eat live food. Oh, okay. And then there was another device my husband got that had like a vibration thing you stick it in the ground and it vibrates I, that didn't work too well either uh yes i bought several of those they 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 will temporarily hinder the mold until they find out it's not dangerous it's not a person and then they just go around it or under it and tunnel right through it yeah okay well My, thank you my son told me the other day that he tried some uh, cayenne pepper and beer. And the only thing I could think of, what a waste of beer. <laughs> that, uh, I, I don't know about that. We had another question in the chat along the same lines of, um, what about products like Mole Max or Grub Max? Do those work or? Any success rate with those? Uh, Mole Max and Grub Max are a poison, virtually. What they do is kill the grub and the earthworm that the mole eats. Uh, the seven that you dust on your around your garden is the same. It will kill the grubs, kill the earthworm, and that will eliminate their food source. So if there's no, when he run across a dead grub in your yard, he's gonna turn around and go somewhere else and go back. Since they only eat live food, if they run across all the insects that they eat that are dead, they will go away. Now, not, you have to be aware when using those products, what you're doing to your lawn or yard or garden. The earthworms are important for the lawn and garden. The grubs, not so much, but the poison that they, the herbicides that they put out kill all. I mean, when you spread the herbicide, it's not selective, so it kills everything. I mean, it'll all the living insects. It doesn't necessarily hurt your lawn, or your plants, but it does hinder the growth in as far as the earthworms go. Earthworms are the best thing going for a garden. We have another question about voles. Is that the same, similar to moles in that way or? Uh, exactly, that's another presentation. Okay. <laughs> but I can tell you that voles are just as bad or worse than mold because voles actually eat plants. They're the vegetarians, the mold is the meat eater. The vole will utilize the mold's tunnels and they will eat 
generally they eat grass, uh, good grass, I might add. And, but in winter, they will eat almost any plant. I lost a couple of uh, hydrangeas and two rose bushes over the winter because they will tunnel underneath the bush and eat the roots. So bows are more of a pain to me than moles are. I mean, that's all the questions. I'm disappointed. I got one more for you, Benny. <laughs> Out of the um, more, I guess, humane options of taking care of, moles without the axe, what would you say was the most successful in your experience? The scissor trap. Okay. Does you can set a scissor trap and not get your hand dirty. I mean, you okay. can, they step on them, some of them. You can push the weight on top, it'll open up, and they all have sensors on top where when the mole push up digging through the soil, when he push up, the plungers and scissors activate. So once they trigger that sensor on top, it activates the, the plunger or scissor trap, which is best. Okay. We meet your hand. With that. My husband bought a scissor trap the first year we had moles, and he caught the biggest, blackest, ugliest creature I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> I'd never seen anything like that not even in picture books I just didn't know what it was and I just freaked out but we haven't had such luck since then maybe they went to the neighbors well if you've been uh, putting herbicides in your lawn that's possible the first year yeah. I bought my house I used uh, the pellets the Chevron seven and I went all over my lawn and I didn't have a mole and they were terrible in my neighbor's yard and they were complaining and I didn't have any. The next year, the price went up. <clears throat> it went from something like $10 to $14 for a 10 pound bag. So I just followed the fence line all around my yard and I only had one mole. And my neighbors were still complaining and com about the mold. So if you can afford to put down the granulars or the liquid, it will send the molds to your neighbors. I don't yeah, know if that's good. About it. He bought something called Grub X and the neighbor behind me, they have a dog. So I'm wondering if the dog gets them because they weren't as bad last year. Well, dogs and cats, will generally take care of a, more, a cat more than a dog. A dog will almost create as much damage as the mole by digging. I mean, he's gonna go after that mole and he'll dig up a mile of dirt to get him. Whereas a cat will be wise enough to watch the mole move and generally dig in that spot. And the, plus the cat will generally bring it to you. The mole, the dog will not. We have one more question in the chat about asking where should they get various traps? Where is the best place to go? Um, well, uh, <laughs> as a master gardener, which I love the organization, best thing ever happened to me, we're not allowed to recommend. But any hardware or box store, big box store like Lowe's, Home Depot will have them. Forget the name, Stewart's. Stewart's has the model. All right. Any other questions? Hey, Benny, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I just have a comment on those traps. You can actually go on like Amazon and um, uh, put in there like the scissors traps. They have some pretty good uh, industrial type traps that'll last. And I recommend getting maybe like four of those. And, and then you just tap down four different areas of your tunnel and you mark where they're at. And like you said, they move twice a day. When you go back and you see that by your stick where you step down on that tunnel that it's raised up, well, you know that's where the, uh, 
the mole's moving. So then you set four traps along certain areas of that tunnel, and it's a lot easier to get them with four traps versus uh, just one. So I, I would recommend you get two traps, but if you just get one trap, you know, you're just playing a little bit of Russian roulette, but uh, you really improve your your uh, choice chances if you get more than more than one trap. And and I was really surprised that you said that they they come in you know multiples because typically I'll have one running underneath the fence line and then it'll spring out into my yard. So I'll uh, trap that one and have pretty good luck with it. But but then they'll be gone for a long time. I won't see another one for you know another month or so. That's probably the offspring looking for the family member. Yeah. Utilize the same tunnel. Right. I, I, it's almost as if they become aware of your routine. I had started after breakfast checking to see if they were there. Uh, a little before lunch, I might go sometimes after lunch and I think they know my routine almost because I I prefer to see what I have. Uh, the axe works just fine, or the pitchfork, depending on which one I have laying outside the barn. And I used to dig them out to make sure I got them, but then I started thinking if a relatives come looking for them and they find them right there, they may not go any further. Yeah. So I just leave them there and give them their last rights right where they fall. Yeah, that's why I like the, the scissors trap, though, because you don't have to be there. You know it's active. You can set them, and you, they, you know, they, they just kind of spring up, and you can tell when you caught one. So it's not you, you can set it and come back a day or, you know, later, a couple of days later. If it moves at 6 a.m. or if it's moving at 6 p.m., yeah, well, uh, you don't have to really be uh, tracking it down at all. So um, yeah, I don't know. When you catch them, do you prefer to put them on the grill or do you uh, put them on the <laughs> crock pot? <laughs> no, do you try to make a fur coat out of that good <laughs> fur? <spirit? laughs> All right. Oh my! Um, Hear me? Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, sir. I I thought you were finished talking. I I was getting grossed out about <laughs> cooking them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a, a question and I apologize if somebody else has already asked this because I've been trying to watch this and, and take care of something else at the same time. So I'm going back and forth, back and forth. But anyway, um, what if it's, you're not sure that you, that it's actually moles? Um, our whole backyard, it, it, it's just, it feels like there's like these little tunnels everywhere. We've never seen anything quite like what's in your pictures or similar to pictures. Um, you know, as far as mounds of dirt, but the whole backyard all of a sudden just feels like, you know, it's, you're walking on quicksand almost because everywhere you walk, it's, it's going to be a hole or a tunnel, um, but we've never seen anything um, specifically, you know, so we're not quite sure if it is a mole or moles or whatever, but we've lived here, what, close to 10 years, and it was just since last summer that this started. And we actually have woods behind our home. Um, what is it, the Wolf River uh, Preserve back there. And um, I'm quite surprised we haven't had anything until last summer. So how do we go about trying to identify it? Or should we just call in a professional and, and have them see if they can figure out where to set traps? Being able to call in a professional is really nice, but uh, you still probably need to know what to tell them to eliminate, and you may have, and I'm assuming here, you have a lush lawn, neatly. Um, I'm sorry, sir. Go ahead. Is it is it very well fertilized and kept up pretty nice? Well. Um... It, it could be. I mean, it's Bermuda grass on most of it. Um, but when we bought the house, we were we had no one on either side of us. But the moment we signed our papers, they broke ground on both sides of us. And of course, when they started building the houses, their yards dump into ours. So our our 
ground is always wet, always. And um, the people that owned the house before us had only been in here for three years, and they did have a lush, gorgeous yard and all kinds of vegetation and, and you know, a garden and, and everything else. But of course, I don't have that green thumb like they did. But, you know, with the right watering and everything, it's beautiful. Um, it's usually really? pretty green and we go with like one of the lawn services. So we get fertilized when they tell us to get fertilized. But it's an okay lawn. It's not huge and, and I mean, lush. Yeah. Even an okay lawn is full of earthworms because that's what helps keeps them green and lush. The okay. biomass from the earthworms helps the lawn, helps the grass. And that's what the moles are after if this moles. Now, chipmunks and those also use the same method, even though those usually travel above ground, but they do tunnel because they will utilize a mole tunnel. Mm -hmm. uh, chipmunks also travel underground, but they don't create a tunnel. They just create, I mean, they don't create a mound or a surface view of a tunnel. And so what you, we're doing is going through the process of elimination of what it could be or could not be. It, it probably is mold because the way you describe your lawn, it's enough to attract mold. Okay. Um, okay. And, I, and I'm pretty sure that's possible. But now you said you saw holes. Um, that well, could be where a mold. Yeah, they're kind of, um, they, they don't necessarily have a mound of dirt. Though I ta just asked my husband and he said, you know, because he put down some of that mold poison before and he said that he saw the little mounds but you know they weren't any larger than you know say a cup a handful three of them yeah six inches across circular okay okay yeah the, not very high they aren't very high yeah. when i was well, blowing some of the leaves i'm sorry i, I just talked right over you with you sir well, when it oh, rains, um, the mountains themselves will flatten out because the rain will help push them down. The mold tunnel, once it gets wet, is very, very squishy, uh, like the yeah. quicksand you described. Because yeah. uh, when they tunnel, it almost sifts the dirt because they are cutting it with the claws and they're cutting it into very small pieces and moving it out the way. The tunneling comes in, or the mound, you see, small mound, not the dirt moving mound, comes in when they push upward with their neck and head. That creates the separation of the uh, roots from the soil along with the digging. So the dirt is really, really soft and squished, really soft. So when it rains, it becomes squishy mud. Mm. Yeah, well, okay. even when we, when it was dry, you know, like when we had some of the dry times last summer, the ground felt like it was wet, even though it wasn't wet, because there's so much activity going on under it, you know, so it, that's why I said it felt kind of like sand, like you're walking across sand with grass. Mm. Um, so whatever even it is, it, it's a little soft when moles are there, but I don't, not the wet part. Uh, they don't generally produce a lot of fluids, even though some of their tunnels almost look as if it's been cemented or waxed down so they can slide through it really easy. Yeah, these little devils are pretty smart, aren't they? Well, um, they came prepared to survive. Just like God created us, they are prepared to survive, and they do everything they can. But you know, it was funny when I when I did come back in, I was hearing talking about, you know, could be armadillos or whatever. My um, mom and dad's neighbors down in Florida, one of them had problems in her backyard and she swore she had moles. And they came in and found out it was an armadillo. Um, and what she ended up doing was just, you know, having, she already had the fence up, but she just put what like, um, 
I, uh, uh, metal along the bottom of the fence all the way around so that it couldn't dig under the fence and come back into her yard. And then she never had anything else. But I saw the mounds that they had, you know, back there. It's like, so maybe that's what I'm comparing in my head instead of. Uh, uh, an armadillo will make a much, much larger hole than a mole will. Uh, yeah, th these, these were bigger, that's for sure. Hmm. You may have an armadillo problem. Um, they do have, they do burrow. Uh, but like I said, their boiling and tunneling is three times the size of a mole. Yeah, once I saw those down there from the armadillo, um, you know, I, I was thankful of what we had up here. So we definitely don't have armadillo based on that up here um, problem. But um, still, maybe that's what I'm envisioning in my head. So. So will they, do they actually, the moles, do they move during the day? Do I have to sit outside and just sit quietly and see if I can see them? Um, they do move during the day. Generally, uh, they're temperature driven is what I've finally figured out. They move when it's not too hot or not too cold. Uh, mornings in the summertime and afternoons in the summertime. In the winter time, it's mostly around noon time when it's warmer. They and in winter they rarely come to the surface. They generally into their deeper permanent tunnels. But in the summer, in March right now is the you will if you have them you'll know it because this is the March and April are the active months. May and June you see the offsprings. So if you have a habitat, they will, you will definitely know it come May. Mm, okay. All right, well, we'll see what we can do then and, and maybe go ahead and, and get some of those traps. And um, the, the other gentleman that was talking to you about the traps, where did you make a suggestion as to where we could get them? Oh, he's not uh, Sorry. <laughs> he said online. He said, I'm not a, uh, I, you may not know Dr. Cooper. He has a program on Sundays uh, and Saturday on, on TV about the plot and the gardener's choice. Uh, if he found out I recommend it, I could be fired, even though I'm a volunteer. But it's <laughs> not not good to recommend no i i don't no please i don't want that i did my husband just told me as you were saying that he's not supposed to recommend i said oh i missed that part of his presentation i'm sorry <laughs> well i can tell you we bought the scissor trap at the tractor supply store on highway 72 last year okay very good thank you mm -hmm. i keep forgetting that store is there and you know i don't live too far from it so yeah they have them Okay, very good. Well, sir, from my perspective, this was very, very informative, and I appreciate you doing this. I and thank you to your library for doing it for us. Well, thank goodness for the library. That, that's their, their purpose, to, to spread information. That's right. Well, Ben, we did have one last question in the chat, and we'll wrap it up with this one. Um, we had a question, what should you use along the fence line to get rid of those moles? Uh, if you want to spread the uh, a herbicide that kills grubs and earthworms, that's possible. And there are several different brands. So any of the herbicides that says it will get rid of grubs and earthworms, that's the one to use. Okay. Wonderful. Well, thank you again. I know this has been so informative and I know um, everyone has learned quite a bit that will help their yards <laughs> to fight against the moles. Well, I hate to, I've rushed a little bit because my wife is ready for me to cook dinner. So. <laughs> You're having some good grilled food. moles? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> oh. 
Well, thank you so much. And I'll end the session now. Um, we appreciate it. Yes, thank you again. Thank you.